So I was asked the question, is Micropulse TLT safe to be performed in various types of glaucoma? And um, so there's, as you can see on this slide, there's you know, copious amounts of literature about uh, the use of uh, TLT, Micropulse TLT in a variety of different glaucomas. And so as a consensus panel, we felt like it's pretty much safe to be used in, in most glaucomas, uh, POAG and acute angle closure glaucoma or uh, glaucoma, angle closure glaucoma is pretty common. Uh, but also all the secondary glaucomas, you know, NVG, very commonly used, obviously, uh, post-keratoplasty, uh, traumatic, congenital, sux foliation, eye syndrome, you know, all the different types of glaucoma, it's, it's pretty common that it's been used in these cases. Ron's going to talk a little bit, I think, next about maybe some of the things that we have to consider with some of them, such as uveitis or some of the other maybe contraindications that we at least have to think about when we're choosing whether or not to use this. And I think as we use uh, the TLT on those patients, we do have to kind of say, you know, what are the risks and benefits? Um, should I use it on a uveitic glaucoma as first line? You know, probably not, probably more leaning towards tubes or other things, but maybe if we've already put in two tubes, uh, it would make sense to, to use it in those cases. Um, so yeah, so it's been used in all sorts of different types of glaucoma. Um, you know, neovascular keratoplasty, that's, I think, really a, an interesting area to be using it in somebody that's had PKPs or DSEX. Um, there's some pretty good efficacy with, that, with actually very limited uh, risk of a graft failure. Uh, there's a couple of good studies on that. Uh, one of the studies I really want to talk about, actually, this is um, a really good study that kind of looked at a variety of different types of glaucoma. And uh, so this is Habashinol. And this was done, um, and actually the settings are actually pretty high. Um, so these are the settings, 2,200 milliwatts, and it's 120 seconds per hemisphere. So this is a, whole, a total of 120, or sorry, 240 seconds total delivered to the eye with a 12 second sweep velocity. So this is one of those papers where we actually got some of that data that we wanted as far as sweep velocity, you know, even power and, and settings, sometimes we don't always get that information on a more consistent basis. Um, obviously this was done with the older probe, um, but uh, we can look at all the different types of glaucoma and that were used in this uh, study. And overall, it was fairly safe in all these different types of glaucomas. Um, you can look at the visual field, or sorry, the vision changes. And for the most part, really not very many changes as far as vision is concerned. That's one of the big things, obviously, we are concerned about mostly. Uh, they did say that they had one instance of uh, inflammation and four instances of kind of those tonic pupils. But again, this is with the older probe. And I, for personally, I haven't seen uh, the tonic pupil at all with the newer probe, just because I think it's being delivered more appropriately to the target tissue. Uh, so I think this is a really good study that tells us, one, not only can we uh, treat a variety of different types of glaucoma, but also that we can do so safely with fairly high settings um, and usually still be pretty safe. So basically, kind of as a panel, we basically decided that the studies basically show that we can be pretty safe in a variety of different types of glaucoma, both primary and secondary. Um, with the secondary glaucomas, neovascular uveitis, we do need to kind of take into consideration other things and obviously uh, treat appropriately and just make sure we're taking account of the post-operative medication and monitoring and things like that. So those are my thoughts. Thanks, Jacob. So as we're waiting for Jella Ann to get her slides up. Do you think you've you've kind of migrated the type of patients you've done it? Like, did you start with using it like in the worst case patients, like the you know continuous wave transcleral? Did you do that in the beginning? Are you moving toward? I, I definitely am moving. So I think two things that have changed. One is um, I'm using it in much milder glaucomas, um, earlier uh, stage glaucomas, better vision glaucomas, um, and then also. I, mean, I used to see a ton of inflammation with, uh, you know, continuous wave. And so now I'm using less steroids. I used to use atropine on all my cases with continuous wave. I don't do that anymore. Um, I don't do um, peri, you know, bulbar tenons or anything like that kind of catalog injections. Um, and, and I don't even do a retro bulbar, bulbar block anymore. Um, and so the recovery is a lot quicker patients, you know, especially like monocular eyes, they're coming right out of the OR once their anesthesia wears off and they're doing pretty good. So definitely earlier now that I feel a little bit more comfortable with the safety profile. 